If we're to encourage um, an uptake in sustainable housing, we have to make it marketable. We've gone for taking it into full four colour process. Um, so the details inside, actually about Collingham and about it being a wonderful place to live, really do come out now. Where in single colour, it was looking. Is it possible to design houses for the mainstream market that are both eco-friendly and affordable? Traditional homes, but they're also, you know, quite luxurious. The final touches are being added to a brochure that markets houses with a difference. In the village of Collingham, a few kilometres from the autonomous house, is a new development that's firmly rooted in the commercial world. Millennium Green is an estate of 20 houses offering traditional comfort with environmental credentials. That's right, we'll use seven max on that one. Always, always on that Stephen side. Wright is managing director of the project. And then on, we'll use the flat plate systems on the smaller properties. The house building industry feels that the house buying public are very, very conservative in what they're in what they want, but I think if you go to the self-build shows, you realise that there's a whole uh, number of people out there that actually are very, very dissatisfied with what's on offer, and they do want something different. The benefit you're going to get on a day like today... That distinctive extra, a, a an environmental like lifestyle but with low day-to-day -day maintenance, is what Wright's company is aiming to deliver. Spurred on by projects like the Autonomous House, they're targeting a potential niche in the housing market. We're a very entrepreneurial type of company. Uh, we like a challenge, we like to sort of be a little bit different and uh, so in, in a way it's, it's the excitement of doing something that's not conventional. The houses boast a range of features that make them energy efficient. Insulation, for instance, is three times that required in current building regulations. Where possible, the houses use materials that minimise their impact on the environment. The research and design of the houses has demanded a great deal of time and effort. The difference is really the thought process that we've used to, f to filter each design decision through, which is basically looking at the environmental impact of the materials, the environmental impact of the actual design of the buildings themselves, and how they work into the local community. Though innovative in environmental terms, the houses look surprisingly traditional. We didn't want to build something that was too space agey and too futuristic. A, we didn't want to alienate any customers, and B, we sort of feel that to be sustainable it needs to not date, they need to fit in with their local environment. So we felt very important really to, to fit in. The extra effort needed to design and build the houses has added around 10% to their standard costs. How much will the customer have to pay? Uh, the additional cost over a standard house for, say, the two-bedroom cottage that we're building uh, is in the region of about £5,000 extra. But the savings in energy costs are probably in the region of four or £500 a year. But then when you come and sell the house, you recoup that money. That hasn't gone down the drain. The acid test is, have the houses found a willing market? We decided we wanted to come and live in Collingham and we were actually looking at older properties and then we saw that they, they were building Millennium Green development and we were very interested in, in the way they were building and thinking about the future. Right, what do you think, David? Well, you know where those are going, don't you? Yeah, that's right. We already had a green background, we had some knowledge of, of the facilities they were going to put into these houses and that's what made sense to us. Yep, we're going to put on that start a new panel. Well, 
like the way that I know that I'm going to be saving energy and not just wasting um, stuff which is polluting the environment. And I just like the way it's um, helping the environment. But not all buyers conform to the green stereotype. That fireplace there, look at that, how big. Yeah. He looks, didn't think he's going to be Steph always comes like with that. the ideas. And when we first started this, he did say that we were his guinea pigs and he would take whatever we said within reason. And that's how it all started. We were told of this concept that it's going to be environment friendly, uh, heating, water saving. But when you come from a place where you have everlasting pain out on all these things and you get them thrown at you, it's impossible not to not to have a go at it. When you see the fireplace like that, it looks so rough. It's a, mm. you the think. heating of the place is so so minimum. And what with the hot water and the solar panels, what more can one wish for? Normally we turn the central heating on about four o'clock in the afternoon, which we find is sufficient then to last through the evening. Um, obviously, the north side of the house doesn't get warm so quickly, but the south side is hot all the time. We don't need any other heating out the side. With a design that favours passive solar gain and with such high insulation levels, could the houses have managed with individual room heaters rather than a costly central heating system? If it never had central heating, we would not be a bit interested in it at all. It is a central heating side of it, which we would be interesting, because otherwise you'd be one room be warm and the rest of the house would be cold. So central heating is imperative. I'm not sure that I would have bought a house without central heating, without fully understanding what, what was in the house and how the systems were going to work. The estate agents said to us that if we didn't put gas central heating in, in a village that has gas, then we might lose buyers. And we couldn't afford to lose buyers because everything we've done on this site, the thought process we've used goes back to that word, is it sustainable? And there's nothing sustainable about going bust. OK, well, I'll just, uh, just have a look inside your rainwater holding tank. Apart from energy efficiency, about half the water requirement in the houses can be met by rainwater collection from the roof. It's about uh, 2.6 metres. Good close. Quite a depth in. That's your... The houses are a balance between environmental features and what their buyers will accept. It's collected off the roof, comes down the down. They gave us the option that low energy lighting would be available, but we wanted some decorative lighting because well, low energy lighting, although it's very, very good, takes time to come on. So consequently, we've got to wait for it. So with the ordinary lighting, it's instantaneous. Otherwise, we'll be waiting for the light to come on. At the end of the day, th these are our customers and we need to get feedback from them as to what they want. Um, there's no good us sitting on, next to, on the drawing board designing something that we think people want because we might be wrong. You might as well listen to them. The extra effort and skill needed to build these homes has made much of the UK house building industry reluctant to follow. But it could be the most realistic attempt yet to bring sustainable housing onto the mainstream market. I like being at the forefront of new technology for sustainable living. I must say it makes me feel proud to be part of this new venture and uh, I really hope that we can help the estate to develop even further.